Governor Palin, is that so? Uh, that is not so, but because that's just a quick answer, I want to talk about, again, uh, my record on energy versus your ticket's energy uh, ticket also. I, I think that this is important to come back to with that energy policy plan, again, that was voted for in 05. When we talk about energy, we have to consider the need to do all that we can to allow this nation to become energy independent. It's a nonsensical position that we are in when we have domestic supplies of energy all over this great land. And East Coast politicians who don't allow energy producing states like Alaska to produce these, to tap into them. And instead, we're relying on foreign countries to produce for us. We're circulating about $700 billion a year into foreign countries, some who do not like America, they certainly don't have our best interests at heart, instead of those dollars circulating here, creating tens of thousands of jobs and allowing domestic supplies of energy to be tapped into and to start flowing into these very, very hungry markets. Energy independence is the key to this nation's future, to our economic future, and to our national security. So when we talk about energy plans, it's not just about uh, who got a tax break and who didn't, and we're not giving oil company tax breaks, but it's about a heck of a lot more than that. Energy independence is the key to America's future. Governor, I'm happy to talk to you in this next section about energy issues. Let's talk about climate change. What is true and what is false about what we have heard, read, discussed, debated, about the causes of climate change. Yeah, well, as the nation's only Arctic state and being the governor of that state, Alaska fills and sees impacts of climate change more so than any other state. And we know that it's real. I'm not one to attribute every man activity of man to the changes in the climate. There is something to be said also for man's activities, but also for the cyclical temperature changes on our planet. But there are real changes going on in our climate. And I don't want to argue about the causes. What I want to argue about is how are we going to get there to positively affect the impacts. We have got to clean up this planet. We have got to encourage other nations also to come along with us with the impacts of climate change, what we can do about that. As governor, I was the first governor to form a climate change sub-cabinet to start dealing with the impacts. We've got to reduce emissions. John McCain is right there with an all-of-the-above approach to deal with climate change impacts. We've got to become energy independent for that reason also. As we rely more and more on other countries that don't care as much about the climate as we do, we're allowing them to produce and to emit and even pollute more than America would ever stand for. So even in dealing with climate change, it's all the more reason that we have an all of the above approach tapping into alternative sources of energy and conserving fuel, conserving our petroleum project products and our hydrocarbons so that we can clean up this planet and deal with climate change. Senator, what is true and what is false about the causes? Well, I think it is man-made. I think it's clearly man-made. And look, this probably explains the biggest fundamental difference between John McCain and Barack Obama and Sarah Palin and Joe Biden, Governor Palin and Joe Biden. If you don't understand what the cause is, it's virtually impossible to come up with a solution. We know what the cause is. The cause is man-made. That's the cause. That's why the polar ice cap is melting. Now, let's look at the facts. We have 3% of the world's oil reserves. We consume 25% of, of the oil of the world. John McCain has voted 20 times in the last decade and a half against funding alternative energy sources, clean energy sources, wind, solar, uh, biofuels, the way in which we can stop the greenhouse gases from emitting. We believe, Barack Obama believes, by investing in clean coal and safe nuclear, we can not only create jobs in wind and solar, here in the United States, we can export it. China is building one to three new coal-fired plants burning dirty coal per week. It's polluting not only the atmosphere, but the west coast of the United States. We should export the technology by investing in clean coal technology. We should be creating jobs. John McCain has voted 20 times against funding alternative energy sources and thinks, I guess, the only answer is drill, drill, drill. Drill we must, but it will take 10 years for one drop of oil to come out of any of the wells that are going to be begun to be drilled. In the meantime, we're all going to be in real trouble. Let me clear something up. Senator McCain has said that he supports caps on carbon emissions. Senator Obama has said he supports clean coal technology, which I have 
don't believe you've always supported. I have always supported. Well, That's a fact. Cl clear it up for us, both of you, and start with Governor Palin. Yes, uh, Senator McCain does support this. The chant is drill baby drill and that's what we hear all across in this country in our rallies because people are so hungry for those domestic sources of, of energy to be tapped into they know that even in my own energy producing state we have billions of barrels of oil and hundreds of trillions of cubic feet of clean green natural gas and we're building a nearly 40 billion dollar natural gas pipeline which is north america's largest and most expensive infrastructure project ever to flow those sources of energy into hungry markets. Barack Obama and Senator O'Biden, you've said no to everything in trying to find a domestic solution to the energy crisis that we're in. You even called drilling safe, environmentally friendly drilling offshore as raping the outer continental shelf. There, with new technology, with tiny footprints even on land, it is safe to drill and we need to do more of that. But also in that all of the above approach that Senator McCain supports, the alternative fuels will be tapped into the, the nuclear, the clean coal. I was surprised to hear you mention that because you had said that there isn't anything such a thing as clean coal. And I think you said it in a rope line too at we one of the need, rallies. We do need to keep, keep within our two minutes, but I just want to ask you, do you support car capping carbon emissions? Uh, I do, I do. Okay. And on the Absolutely. Issue. Absolutely, we do. We, we, we call for setting hard targets, number one. Clean oh, I'm coal. Sorry. On clean coal. Oh, on clean coal. My record, just take a look at the record. My record for 25 years has supported clean coal technology. A comment made in a rope line was taken out of context. I was talking about exporting that technology to China so when they burn their dirty coal, it won't be as dirty, it will be clean. But here's the bottom line, Gwen. How do we deal with global warming with continued addition to carbon emissions? And if the only answer you have is oil, and, John, and, uh, and the governor says John's for everything, well, why did John vote 20 times? Maybe he's for everything as long as it is not helped forward by the government. Maybe he's for everything if the free market takes care of it. Next, I don't know, but he voted 20 times against funding alternative the energy next round of, Pardon me. The next round of questions starts with you, sure. Senator Biden. Uh, do, you, uh, do you support, as they do in Alaska, granting same-sex benefits to couples? Absolutely. Do I support granting same-sex benefits? Absolutely, positively. Look, in an Obama-Biden administration, there will be absolutely no distinction from a constitutional standpoint or a legal standpoint between a same-sex and a heterosexual. The fact of the matter is that under the Constitution, we should be granted. Uh, Same-sex couples should be able to have visitation rights in the hospitals, joint ownership of property, uh, life insurance policies, etc. That's only fair. It's what the Constitution calls for. And so we do support. We do support making sure that, that committed couples in the same-sex marriage are guaranteed the same constitutional benefits as it relates to their property rights, their rights of visitation, their rights of insurance, their rights of ownership, as, as heterosexual couples do. Governor, would you support expanding that beyond Alaska to the rest of the nation? Well, not if it goes closer and closer towards redefining the traditional definition of marriage between one man and one woman. And unfortunately, that's sometimes where those steps lead. But I, I also want to um, clarify if there's any kind of suggestion at all from my answer that I would be anything but tolerant of adults in America choosing their partners, choosing relationships um, that uh, they deem uh, best for themselves. You know, I am tolerant and I have uh, a very diverse family and group of friends and even within that group you would see some who may not agree with me on this issue, some very dear friends who don't agree with me on this issue, but um, in that tolerance also no one would ever propose, not to, in a McCain-Palin administration, to do anything to prohibit, say, visitations in a hospital or um, contracts uh, being signed, negotiated between parties. But I will tell Americans straight up that I don't support uh, defining marriage as anything but between one man and one woman. And I think through nuances we could go round and round about what that actually means. But I'm being as uh, straight up with Americans as I can in uh, my non-support for anything but a traditional definition of marriage.